Hey yo, what up? It's your boy. So this is gonna be kind of an older topic or I guess reacting to an older video. It came out about a year ago from uh, Vice Asia, but I was just notified of it uh, the other day and my God, I'm genuinely surprised I hadn't talked about it up until now. Because look, this channel that you're on right now, I love talking about Japan, whether that be in the super positive, things that make Japan really cool type of way, to everything that makes Japan a very questionable society to live in for a lot of people. Although Japan is my home, it is half of my blood, I don't play favorites. And I think uh, every country has the right to criticism and every country has the right to commentary uh, because there is no such thing as a perfect country out there. Japan especially is not such a country. So step into my shoes real quick. Having found this particular video and reading this title, absolutely losing my mind over it because the title is children are getting cosmetic surgery in Japan. But there's a massive, massive difference between an adult who is deciding to go get plastic surgery with, you know, their own decisions and their own life choices and children who are definitely below the age of what is societally accepted at getting plastic surgery at, being forced by their peers and worse still their parents to fix a change that is not even that much of a problem. This is the video that covers that side of Japan. And so I figured we would do this and go through this topic together in a classic reaction style video. Uh, obviously I'm gonna be pausing a lot during this video because uh, I don't wanna just free boot off of other people's content uh, to give my thoughts. So if you would like to watch the uninterrupted video, then you can do so by going down to the description below. And uh, as you can see from this trigger warning, uh, this video is going to be pretty goddamn brutal and I'm probably not going to show a lot of parts of this video on my own video. So if you, again, want to check it out and go support Vice Asia for doing this documentary, uh, then yeah, please do so. It's really shocking that this very uh, contentious topic uh, has only just got like half a million views, which if you compare it to a lot of other Japan-based Vice documentaries is really not a lot. So suffice to say, not a lot of people are talking about this, but I'm going to be talking about it today. Without further ado, let's jump into it. We're about to go meet a nine-year-old girl who was advised by her mom to get double eyelid surgery. Nine years old nine fucking years old are you kidding me there is not a planet where a nine-year-old should be getting plastic surgery that's it's just it's just not a thing like and 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 when you're nine years old you're not even old enough to have like fully come to terms with like how you look you haven't even matured yet this girl hasn't even got her first period yet and she's already going in for plastic surgery damn i'm already pissed off this early into the nine seconds in and i'm already pissed off it's a procedure that adds an extra fold in your eyelid to make your eyes look bigger. So you If you endure the pain of plastic surgery, that's what makes you a beautiful person in your opinion. Kid, I hate to say it, but your opinion is just wrong. And really uh, just disturbing and like really misleading and quite dangerous because you know if kids are growing up with this kind of mentality what is going to be the standard of beauty for these kids like the standard of beauty in japan is already impossibly high because of the impossibly high standards that the japanese population has in terms of physical beauty but trying to achieve that at an age where you haven't even finished fully maturing is just really disturbing in my opinion japan is ranked fourth in the world for having the most number of plastic surgery procedures see that point really is not surprising uh considering that again as i mentioned japan societally does have this incredibly high beauty standard when it comes to physical looks uh, especially amongst women and i feel that kind of impossible beauty standard is definitely perpetuated from neighboring countries like korea and you know with the things like k-pop but also in japan locally with things like the idol industry just creating this unexpected barrier of entry for how you should look to be considered like beautiful in japan and it's it's, it's a little bit sick and twisted I'm eating. I mean, already right then and there, you can see why this nine-year-old kid, Michi, has been fallen victim into this very unethical and very quite disturbing uh, circumstance of getting double eyelid surgery at nine years old. Just, just this picture 
says it all. You have a mother who clearly has gotten a lot of plastic surgery done on her face. I mean, you can just tell considering that the kid and the mother look nothing alike, so it's obvious that the mother has had something done. And also you have that added pressure of the fact that there are YouTuber, mother and child who probably talks about things like plastic surgery. So already right then and there, you have that extra pressure for the kid to like look the best because you're being displayed in front of a large number of unidentifiable anonymous people of the internet. And one thing that <laughs> that kind of audience is very, very good at, if, if the internet has proved anything, that they are very, very good at making you feel like shit, making any person, no matter how ugly or beautiful, just lose self-esteem with terrible comments, hiding behind a keyboard, and it's a really toxic mentality for a nine-year-old to be introduced to. Like, it, like especially at that early of an age, like, that would absolutely fuck you up mentally. Michi recently had the double eyelid procedure. It's illegal for minors in Japan to get plastic surgery as long as the parents consent. Okay, that right there is such a red flag. Uh, the, the reporter said that in Japan, it is technically legal under federal law that minors are allowed to get plastic surgery with their parents' consent. And I think that is such a broken law to have. I mean, because again, at the end of the day, you are, in this case, you are a nine-year-old girl, right? Like, I don't know about you guys, but when I was nine years old, I couldn't make any fucking life decisions for myself. I probably didn't even have any life decisions to make my for myself at the age of nine. Like, I was just focused on making friends and going to school, getting good grades, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, a nine-year-old or any minor in Japan is not going to be in the right frame of mind when making these pretty huge life decisions to alter the way that they look at such a young age. And look, double eyelid surgery isn't like the most radical thing you could do to your face. And I'm obviously no plastic surgeon or anything like that. But, you know, already just like that in and of itself is really immoral because let's face it, uh, even though I'm sure this mother is not going to admit on camera, but I'm sure this kid was pressured into it from her mother. And I'm sure, you know, you're looking at the mother again, having done quite a bit of plastic surgery on her face, I don't know exactly how much, but you can just tell from looking that I think there's a big part of it where the mother is pushing her own self-esteem issues and insecurities on the way that she looks onto her children at such a young age. And I think I would like to argue that that is like kind of a form of child abuse. Like if we're being straight up, that is kind of a form of child abuse. Putting this kid into this very traumatic situation where they have to go in to do cosmetic surgery at the age of nine. Again, before the child has even grown up and figured herself out, I think is in a way a form of abuse am i the only one who thinks that i don't know okay look bullying is no joke especially in japan japan is quite infamous for having a very high rate of bullying and the type of bullying can get really, really bad. If a kid gets bullied for the way that they look, in the case with what Michi said, uh, a lot of kids thought that like the way that she looks, it looked like they were glaring at her the entire time. And that's why, you know, she has insecurities with the way that her eyes look. I think the most irresponsible thing you can do as a parent is to agree with her and then go, I have a perfect solution to that. Just change the way you look, which leads me on to, I think the biggest issue that is currently hiding under the rug of Japanese society. And it's this thing that Japan as a whole, as a society, has kind of fallen behind in terms of mental health in a lot of different ways. Let me explain. I'm no parent myself, but if I was the parent of a child like Michi, like if my daughter came back from school and said, hey, I'm getting bullied because people or kids around me think that like my eyes are scary and, and, and that's causing me to get bullied in some way or another. I would not tell them then, hey, oh yeah, you know what? That's kind of true. You, your eyes do look kind of fucked up. We should probably change that. Thank God plastic surgery exists, dog. No, if I was the parent, I would say, fuck those kids. 
they're also nine years old. They don't know shit. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And if it's really getting to a case where like the bullying has become so severe that it's really fucking you up mentally, let dad take care of it. Let mom and dad take care of it. Fucking give me the names of those kids. I'll talk to those parents. I'll talk to the school and don't worry about what they say because you are my child, you are beautiful, and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Just that kind of reaffirming and like self-assurance to the child is going to do wonders for their self-esteem. And I think the parent in this case suddenly, you know, turning the other way and saying, yeah, you know what, your face is fucked up, let's change it. What's that going to do to that kid's self-esteem, especially when they get older? They're going to think to themselves, oh, every problem in life that I have can be fixed very easily just by going under the knife. And look, sometimes plastic surgery does change those kinds of perspectives and getting plastic surgery for a lot of people is that self-esteem boost. But if you're in a constant cycle of that, you're going to be chasing after something that is impossible to achieve. Like, you're going to be chasing after this impossible beauty standard that, for a lot of people, will never be reached no matter how many times you get fallen under the knife. After a while, this kid, I guarantee, when once this kid gets older and actually does start to, you know, learn a little bit more about her surroundings and the way that her mother pretty much gaslit her into getting plastic surgery at such a young age, that mother-daughter dynamic is going to get fucked up because the daughter is going to realize just how messed up of a suggestion this mother is making to her. <laughs> yeah, no shit. You know why? Because just getting double eyelids in Japan doesn't make you exempt from bullying, dog. Like, that's literally just adding an extra eyelid. It's not like you're suddenly going to be the most popular kid in the school just because you have double eyelids. That just doesn't work like that. No, that's fucked up, dog. That's fucked up. <laughs> no! She, no, you said that like a real adult. No, you said that like a brainwashed child. That's what you said that like. Like, I guarantee these are the exact words that her mother probably has been enlisting to her at such a young age. Like, no, don't don't think to yourself like, oh, wow, my kid is so mature for realizing this flawed way of looking at the world. Like, no, that's fucked up. Like, why are you proud of this? Luchi is the mother of five children, two girls and three boys, one of them severely handicapped. She's convinced that the success of her daughters relies almost exclusively on their looks. The ball pen. Bro, like, we're, we're literally watching child abuse on camera. Like, what what is wrong with this mother, dog? で、with these points that are being made, which highlights another glaring problem with Japan's beauty standards. And it's the fact that for some reason, and I don't know why, and this doesn't apply to every single Japanese person, but from my experience of living here and my experience, you know, meeting a lot of Japanese people, seeing documentaries like this, and just being in the field, I think that there is for some reason this really large emphasis on physical looks when it comes to any kind of relationship that is formed amongst Japanese people, whether that be platonic or romantic or anywhere in between. There is this first hurdle that a lot of Japanese people have somewhat of a difficult time overstepping when it comes to their physical looks. They think that, and especially a lot of women think this for some reason, and it's that, oh, if I look pretty, if I look beautiful, if I am as close to that impossible standard of beauty, then I'm going to have a much easier time making friends, being popular, having a lover. And look, I'm not saying that like good looks 
is like completely irrelevant in this equation? Absolutely not. I think, you know, er any of us can, you know, everyone can agree here that it is just kind of how it goes that people are attracted to beautiful things. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I think when you put all of your skill points into the way that you look and zero skill points into having an actually interesting personality, like trying to build up your personality, I think that's when you start to get a really difficult long-term problem with any kind of relationship. I mean, think about it, right? Like, you know, anyone who has like a, a large number of friends, right? Like, or even a medium amount of friends, right? Like not every single person you are friends with and that you like hanging out with is the most like beautiful person in the world. Why is that? Because sometimes you could be the most incredible 10 out of 10 looking person, but have an absolute zero out of 10 personality. And at the end of the day, if you want to maintain a long term relationship, platonic or not, with that person, personality goes a long freaking way. Like Japan kind of views relationships as like this box that has been wrapped up beautifully with the most pristine wrapping paper ever and this big beautiful bow like it looks amazing it looks like an amazing present but then when you actually open up the box there's nothing inside and people like this mother right here seem to think that oh it doesn't matter what's inside the present as long as the present looks pretty and unfortunately that's just not really how it works for a lot of people sure there might be a lot of people out there who don't give a fuck about people's personality and are just there to satisfy their sexual needs with a beautiful man or woman sure i, I you know you do you dog but i think when it comes to committing to long-term relationships like having a long-lasting friend or having a girlfriend or a wife or a husband or a boyfriend any kind of romantic partner i think there needs to kind of be a balance of both for a lot of people i mean sure obviously uh, different people are going to have different perspectives on how they view physical looks versus personality but i think for a lot of people and i i speak on behalf of myself as well i think any kind of relationship you have a nice mixture of both is the best case scenario you don't have to be the most amazing looking guy or girl out there but if you have a a very engaging and interesting personality that people can fuck with then that works just as well if not better than someone who is like achieve the impossible beauty standard of the country but has dog shit personality unfortunately japan has kind of been conditioned into thinking that looks is everything and there are a lot of factors at hand when it comes to reinforcing that mindset you know again for one as i mentioned the idol industry and you know things like the impossible beauty standards of things like k-pop have definitely influenced the importance of physical looks over mental health and personality <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, that's just your opinion, dog. I've met plenty of women, plenty of men with monolids who I'm just like, damn, you are fucking hot. I think that's just an opinion and, you know, trying to display that as fact and justification for your nine-year-old to get double eyelid surgery is really twisted. うーん、なんかちょっと麻酔が効きづらくてパニックを起こしちゃったから本当はもう 1 20分 Oh my god. Are you kidding me? It was supposed to be over in 20 minutes, but in the end it took them more than 2 hours. So she woke up during her procedure. Do you know how traumatic that must fucking feel for a 9-year-old girl? Like are you kidding me? Waking up in the middle of a knife being dug into your eyelids? That would be fucking traumatic for anyone, let alone a nine-year-old girl. And the mother is just like, okay with this and has influenced the child into thinking that this is all okay. Yeah, it was the most traumatic experience of my life and was completely unnecessary to where I am in life, but you know what? I got through it and that makes me beautiful. No, that's not what happens. You got through it, yes, but that doesn't necessarily fix all of your problems in life. According to a study in 2021, many in Japan get plastic surgery due to peer pressure or influence from family and friends. Yes, and I think that is, again, uh, kind of a direct result of just how uh, Japan's society is kind of dependent on the peers around them. Like, again, you have to understand that Japan is a collectivist society. In other words, if the people around you are thinking that this is what how things should be, 
then you are obviously going in to be pressured heavily into also believing that because if you step out of line even a little bit in Japan and give an opposing opinion or don't agree with the general consensus, then you are going to be ostracized socially from a lot of groups in Japan. And I think that's kind of unfortunate because in this time and age, I guess, you know, when we're talking about things like the topics that are covered in this video, I think the collective norm of how Japan thinks people should look and the normality of minors getting plastic surgery to change their face at a young age is very, very flawed and very, very apocalyptic in a sense. We're about to meet the plastic surgery influencer Nonoka, who also works as a manager for a hostess bar. That's where girls talk and serve to customers. She spent over 25 million yen on her plastic surgery, but she's far from done. And I think, again, like, as the reporter suggested, the, you know, the whole idea of, like, hostess clubs where, like, looks are everything, personality is second to next, uh, I think definitely doesn't help the whole physical looks is everything mentality that Japan has. And, and you know, maybe I'm unfair to Japan in that sense. I think this kind of mindset is very general with a lot of different cultures in the world. Hell, you could even say it's like, it's almost becoming like the human standard of, oh, physical looks is everything. If you don't look hot, if you don't look sexy, if you don't look perfect, then people aren't going to take you seriously. You're going to go nowhere in life, blah, 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 blah. But Japan, I think, is definitely following that general consensus just a little bit too hard. <laughs> See, in this rare instance, I guess for this person, getting plastic surgery has definitely boosted their self-esteem. And you know what? You love to see it, you know? Uh, whatever it takes to boost your self-esteem, as long as you're not harming others in the process, I think is completely valid. And if it worked for her, then good on her. But I think then, it causes a different issue. And it's the fact that you are now constantly chasing that next high. You are constantly chasing that end goal that you're trying to get to. But unfortunately, in this case, the end goal is a goal that keeps moving further and further and further away with the times. Because beauty standards in any country or any culture or even just the world is something that not a lot of people can get to and not a lot of people will ever get to because it's constantly changing. A certain trend or look in beauty standards that is currently relevant at the time may not necessarily be relevant in a couple of years time. So even if you do achieve that perfect visual uh, perfection, if you'd call it, for that moment in time, in a couple of years time, you're going to be moving to that next goal. And how are you going to get to that next goal? By constantly going through plastic surgery again. It's this catch-22 that just never ends. And on top of that, you're trying to do all of this while also aging, which, you know, as Radiohead's Tom York once perfectly said, gravity always wins. And you are eventually going to get to the point where no matter what you do to your face, you are going to be too old to ever be considered into the runnings of going into the beauty standard for that time. And that's just human nature at the end of the day. And look, I think plastic surgery for people like this who are trying to achieve the impossible is just something that will never be achieved uh, until you yourself finally realize that or when people start to go, uh, yeah, your face is looking a little bit weird, dog. According to Nonaka, as a hostess, you are the product. She openly advertises that most girls here have had plastic surgery. It's the theme of the bar. But more than a decade ago, when Nonaka had her first procedure at 18, plastic surgery was not yet as accepted in Japanese society, and her mother was strictly against it. Going on the topic of hostess clubs, right, since it was brought up in this documentary, uh, I want to kind of point back to what Roland told me in his interview. Uh, if you haven't seen that interview, by the way, it's on the main channel. He is one of the most successful hosts in all of Japan, uh, and he's fantastic to talk to. But he even said himself, I don't remember if I actually included it in that video or not, but I remember him saying to me specifically, it doesn't matter if you have the perfect looks in a host club because in the long run, 
if you're not interesting to talk to, if you don't have a personality that is engaging and that women like, you are not going to go anywhere. And he said that looks do not equate to success in this type of field. And I'd like to believe hostess clubs are kind of the same way. I mean, sure, you know, maybe men aren't as interested, Japanese men aren't as interested in a girl's personality as they are their looks as opposed to a host club. But I think the same argument can be made for a hostess club where like, if I went to a hostess club, for the record, I've never been to a hostess club, never really been interested in the concept. And I wanted to get to know a girl or a hostess for a long period of time, I'd like to hope that she has a personality that I won't get bored of immediately after the first visit. And that's exactly what Roland wanted to state as well. It's that like personality is just as important, if not more important for people in these kinds of industries. So you have a girl here, Nonoka on the left, who is very focused on just achieving that physical beauty standard, but is she doing anything to better her personality? Doesn't seem like it. So you're basically putting on all these add-ons onto your physical point skill tree and really neglecting your personality skill tree, which I like to think is just as important for an occupation of this kind. So it's really kind of honestly sad to see someone just not realizing that and uh, is kind of shooting themselves in the foot in the process. <laughs> Again, just like the first mother and now this person's mother, another huge issue is the parents aren't parenting properly. And look, I look, you might think I'm not a parent myself. I have no say in this, but you don't have to be a parent to know that that's shit parenting, right? Like if, if you have a problem with the way, if your child had a problem with the way that they looked and are getting bullied for it, the last thing you should be doing to that child is agreeing with their bullies and saying, yeah, you know what? They're kind of right. You should fucking do something about it. Instead of trying to like encourage them to be like, no, those are just bullies. Fuck them. You're beautiful. You're magnificent. You're great just the way you are. Which is a mentality that you see in a lot of Western cultures because the Western cultures, unlike Japan, greatly emphasize on individuality. They greatly emphasize on being an individual. You don't have to be like everyone else. You can shine in your own way that doesn't necessarily fit into the norm. Japan, unfortunately, is very low on that type of thinking. Like, it, they just think to themselves, if you're not like everyone else, or if you're not up to what society deems as beautiful, then you've just fucked up, or you fucked up as a parent, which is so incredibly toxic and disturbing to think about. That guarantee these two mothers in this documentary are far from being the only mothers or parents in Japan that are probably inciting and gaslighting their children into thinking this way. Yeah, because you basically laid on a traumatic experience to this girl at a young age. Like, of course she's not going to stop because uh, part of her is probably thinking, well, if I stop and if my mom doesn't allow it, she might pull the knife on herself again. And that's just going to guilt trip me into doing more of these procedures. Like, it is the most toxic form of gaslighting that a parent could ever do to their children. Like, making them the victim or making themselves the victim and trying to gain sympathy for points from their very innocent child is just such a fucked up way of, you know, enlisting any kind of thought process to a young person. じゃあ、その yeah, see, and she's literally just admitted that the beauty standards are constantly changing. You know, a couple of decades ago, as she said, that whole, like, French doll look of, like, the real, unrealistic, like, Barbie doll look in Japan was really, really popular. And you could see that very quickly when just doing a quick search uh, on Japanese YouTube, for instance. But now that trend has changed with the rise of K-pop. Now the whole K-pop look is the new thing. So you're... You're aware, this person is aware that these beauty standards are changing. 
and yet is constantly trying to go for that next beauty standard. But the thing with plastic surgery is that it's not like a magic Disney wand that completely changes everything to make it fit exactly the way it is. No, it's you're adding stuff onto what you have already built. So down that process, your face is just going to start looking more and more fucked up to the point where you're going to have to start getting plastic surgery to fix old plastic surgery procedures. And on top of that, again, as I mentioned, you're aging you're in, with time as well as these trends are changing. So it's just going to get more and more difficult to achieve that look that you have envisioned in your head. So it's a rat race that never ends. Once you start, you have to continue doing it infinitely until eternity. Uh, no, you really don't have to. You, you really don't have to. And if anything, you shouldn't. Because, you know, I think it's, for one, impossible to achieve no matter how long you do it for. But two, as you get older, there's going to start to be more complications and more risks every time you go under the knife. You're more prone to infections, you're more, more prone to disfigurement, you're more prone to all of these problems as you get older and your immune system may not be as good as when you were young. Like sure, if you go to like Korea, for example, and you know, go to the top plastic surgeon, you're probably less prone to getting any kind of infection or side effects, but that doesn't mean that the procedure is always 100% safe. Like there is always the risk of having something that was unexpected expected that might end up fucking your face up quite a bit so every time you're going under the knife you are putting yourself at risk to try and achieve this impossible standard that you'll most likely never be able to achieve or never be satisfied with moms like Ruchi feel plastic surgery is a way to boost self-esteem but she's also faced strong backlash online. Yeah, and I'm about to give provide more of that backlash because I think plastic surgery equating to hiring self-esteem is a temporary solution to a permanent problem. This is not the optimal way or the safest way to boost one's self-esteem. Valid. Valid. Okay, look, there, again, there's nothing wrong with getting double eyelid surgery, but this woman clearly doesn't understand the position that she is currently in. She is, I'm not saying that getting double eyelid surgery is a bad thing. What I'm saying is persuading your still nine-year-old child into thinking that double eyelid surgery is a necessity at this time is what's fucked up. Because clearly she is putting her own insecurities onto her child. And again, at the age of nine, when you are definitely far from making any kind of life-changing surgery like plastic surgery, I think is really fucking irresponsible and is really reflective on just how much her self-esteem, the mother's self-esteem, is not as high as she thinks it is. Like, she mentioned, like, oh, beauty and getting plastic surgery boosts your self-esteem. Well, from the looks of it, she seems like she has pretty fucking low self-esteem, considering that she's dragging her nine-year-old child into all of this bullshit. Like, okay, look, that's an 18, that's the mother right there i don't know about you she looks fine she looks great i have i have i have no problem with a japanese woman who looks like this so like i i get like you know if you have like body dysmorphia or you know any kind of like issues with how you view your body then clearly no one including myself has no right to say oh you're wrong you're perfectly fine as it is but i think Again, like, you're 18, right? At that time, you can make life decisions. You're basically an adult now. So you have more of, I guess, a clearer mind of how you want to go ahead with making these life-changing plastic surgery decisions. But a nine-year-old does not have that. A nine-year-old does not have the capability of thinking like an 18-year-old. And that's what's the biggest issue. That's where all the backlash is coming from. Getting plastic surgery is not the backlash. Forcing your child to get plastic surgery is what's causing the backlash. <laughs> Well, no, that's that logic is false because 
you're literally coming onto camera right here to admit, and you've made a YouTube channel openly and publicly to admit that your nine-year-old had double eyelid surgery. So you're kind of doing the opposite of the message you're trying to convey. So the mother just admits it. The mother just admits that, yeah, I made her do it because I have my own insecurities that I'm mirroring to my child. So you basically just admitted that you just fucking gaslit your nine-year-old into getting unnecessary plastic surgery. The fuck is happening? <laughs> Bro, she looks like she's got a gun pointed to her head. And that's really fucking sad. Like, her mom is playing the victim card and enforcing that on this nine-year-old girl. Like, that's not healthy. No, anybody can see this is not a healthy relationship. This is toxic as fuck. It's manipulative. It's abusive. And honestly, the mother should not be cool with this. And any of you guys watching this should not be cool with this. <laughs> You're sorry that you made her go through that painful experience? Motherfucker, you're the one who did it! What are you talking about? Again, trying to gain pity points from this, like, Oh, I had no choice. I had to put my daughter under the knife, otherwise she would have been bullied for the rest of her life. Uh, like, no, shut the fuck up. You're... You're just mirroring your own insecurities onto this, not helping your daughter build any kind of natural self-esteem boost whatsoever, and uh, trying to, again, make it look like, oh, mom, mom was in such a perilous position, I'm sorry, daughter, uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't up to me, it was society that's at fault. <laughs> Professor Tomohiro Suzuki is an expert on self-perception and has released various studies on the topic. <laughs> ビオ整形をさせる親の心理を説明していただけますでしょうか。例えば親がですね、やはり、え、ビオ整形をやって、それによってこう、例えばこう、いろんなベネフィットというか、え、ポジティブな何かの経験をすることによって、で、子供にも
For a girl, it's all about looks. Your personality or anything else doesn't matter. That is truly spoken from someone with probably a boring as shit personality. And again, this is, it's kind of sad to think that for a lot of girls in Japan, this might honestly be the way of thinking about things. It's all about your looks. You don't have to have an amazing personality. You don't have to have anything like that. As long as you look like a 10 out of 10 perfect Japanese girl, then that's what's going to solve all your problems. You're going to have it easy in life. And sure, in some aspects, that might be true. But for the average person, the average Japanese girl or boy, uh, that's not how you maintain long-term relationships. And it clearly shows in studies performed in Japanese society of, say, for example, the rate of cheating and the normality of cheating amongst Japanese people. Like, people, you know, sleeping with other people because they get bored of their current partner or, you know, end up having, like, a sexless relationship, for instance. Like, I think that pretty much goes to show that maintaining a long-term relationship personality is just as important if not more important than looks and to completely negate one for the other is really foolish in my opinion yeah maybe for like that uh, like maybe for a dumb fuck who doesn't give a shit about personality but i think i speak on behalf of a lot of men out there that you know yeah obviously we want girls to look pretty but we also want girls to be interesting. We want them to have personalities that we like and that we can normally, you know, just converse with and have a fun time with. You can change your face, but there's no surgery to fix your personality. Yeah, you are right. In fact, in order to fix your personality, you don't even need surgery. In a lot of cases, it's actually free. Like, all you have to do is just work on your self-esteem, work on your personality, you know, fucking find a hobby, find an interest that you can connect to other people with, have a passion in your life. That is free to do for a lot of people and is way less risky than going under the knife to get a double eyelid. That's fucked up. Plastic surgery is a form of support. No, it's not. It's a form of neglect, especially at that age. You know what would have been a form of support? Telling your daughter's bullies to go fuck themselves. That would have been a form of support. Making sure to reinforce to your child that you are beautiful just the way you are and everyone will like you and people will like you for the way that you are fuck what all these other kids are saying about you because it's invalid they're just children they don't know what the hell they're talking about it's just yelling at the end of the day like giving mental support to your child is so incredibly important especially at such a young age in my opinion and i'm sure parents all watching this video can vouch for me as well on that in general, I'll leave it up to them. Oh, but uh, actually, now that you say that, uh, yeah, I want her, her, her to have a nose job. Yeah, but I'll, I'll leave it up to them. You know, no, no, no pressure from me or anything. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna victim card myself again. But it would be nice if my daughter really loved me. She would get a nose job, uh, not for me, but 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 for her own self esteem. Like, can are you guys realizing how fucking toxic this is? Are you guys realizing just how much she is gaslighting her child into doing this? It's honestly fucking disgusting. All right, I've had enough with this documentary. I think I've said everything that I wanted to say. Um, if you couldn't tell from just how fucking enraged I am throughout this entire video, um, I am fucking in outraged. And I think Japan should definitely make it illegal for kids under the age of 18 to get plastic surgery. I'm pretty sure this law doesn't even exist anywhere else outside of it. I don't even think Korea 
lets this happen. Like, I, I might be wrong in that. I'm not a fucking, you know, professional with this kind of plastic surgery laws or anything, but I feel like this is quite unique to Japan and is a byproduct of the mentality that the Japanese society to think that this is like some normal thing and something that every child should go through, which is incredibly toxic. And I very much fear for the future of the next generation of Japanese boys and girls who have to potentially go through this because they've, their perception of reality has just been warped to shit by their very toxic parents. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. If you want to, again, go check out the full documentary, uh, then I've left it down in the description below. Let me know what you guys think about anything I said in the comments below. And uh, we got to do better, Japan. You have so many great fucking things going for you. It's just blemishes like this that makes me just lose hope in humanity <laughs> but anyways guys thanks for watching hey if you enjoyed this video make sure to smack my face right here subscribe to the channel let's keep making big channel number go bigger over here next to my head is a couple more videos you can check out if you enjoyed this one links to my social media as well as my patreon to support me directly and nonsense my clothing brand we make cool shit check it out nonsense.jp and i will see you all in the next one peace